Hi there, Michael Berris for Director of Investment Services here at OpenCorp. Ever since I've been investing for the last 20 years, I think I've had the question from, uh, from clients and from other investors, Michael, which makes more sense to buy new investment properties or to invest in established property? The answer is always to invest in the one that allows you to be able to springboard into another and another and another because uh, the most common mistake that investors make is they buy they make investing rather about the property that they buy. And I understand why this question's coming up. It's really topical at the moment because build costs have, have increased a lot over, uh, over the last three years or so um, as a result of the supply chain challenges. But you've got to remember that you don't invest in a property, you're investing in a strategy and one property is never going to be enough to help most people achieve the financial goals that they've got. It needs to be a process where the first property allows you to be able to springboard into another into another, into another, and so on. So fundamentally, what you're trying to do is be able to hold the most amount of investment asset, the highest dollar value of investment asset for as little money out of your own pocket as possible. And this is exactly what's allowed me personally to be able to build a double digit portfolio uh, over the last uh, 20 years that pays for itself and creates a passive income for me as well. Now, what I'm gonna be sharing with you in this, uh, in this video, uh, this short video, is which one of these two property types makes the most sense, uh, what the benefits are, and, and specifically what the risks are as well, because investing is not risk-free. We need to make sure that we're getting right. We're not buying lollipops. So let's start with a quick side-by-side -side comparison of the different property types here, and you'll be able to see exactly what I mean with regards to the, uh, the, the asset type that makes the most sense. So on the left here, we have uh, a new property, on the right here, we have an established property. And if you think about the, the types of income that you've got to be able to hold a property, one is the rent. The second are the tax benefits. The third is any, the difference coming out of your post-tax dollars, out of your pocket as the investor. So let's think about that. With a new property, you get much more in rent because people will pay more to live in a new property than an old one. Even if it's a few years old, if there's new property available, it will attract a premium. But far more specifically, you can see there, it's so important, we've highlighted in green, that you're able to get $10,000 or thereabouts of more depreciation for a new property compared to an established property. So the ATO changed the rules a few years ago, where if you buy an established property, you can't claim any of the depreciation on the fixtures and fittings, uh, unless you've paid for them, i.e. you've replaced a, an appliance, for example. And if you think about what that means, an extra $10,000 worth of tax deductions based on your marginal tax rate, that's you know three to nearly $5,000 extra back in your pocket each year as the investor. That is three to $5,000 extra that, um, or less I should say, that you're not having to contribute out of your own pocket as the investor. And as you can see there in the, uh, in the blue squares, holding a new property is so much more affordable than an established property. If each property was costing you over $200 a week with the cost of living challenges right now, it's going to be really difficult to be able to hold a second one, far less a third or a fourth or more. But at under $100 a week, then it's very easy to be able to hold two or three for exactly the same cash flow as one established property. And this is where amateur investors fall down. They make investing about the property and they go, I don't want to build new. I'm going to buy established because it's easier. Let me be really clear. What is easiest? is not necessarily best. Okay. And this shows you literally side by side why new makes far more sense for smart investors. I'll get into the risk shortly and cover those, but if we just consider what that means from a portfolio perspective over a really short time frame, I'll map it out for you like this. If you can hold three new properties for about the same cash flow as one established property, if those properties are $700,000 each, you're able to hold $2.1 million worth of asset, three new properties versus one established property at $700,000. Now, let's assume both of those double over the next 10 years. Then that means that your three new properties have grown to be worth a collective $4.2 million in 10 years from now. Your one established property has grown to be worth $1.4 million in uh, asset value in 10 years from now. So what we can see there is that just by being smart about the type of property that you invest in and not looking short term at what might make you feel better or might make sense based on being able to get rent from day one is a $2.5 million decision over 10 years. 
And even if you're able to add more properties to that based on the new scenario, which is what we've been able to do and hundreds of our clients have been able to do, right, then that number just gets bigger and bigger and bigger. So remember why you're investing. It's to maximize your financial return. It's not to invest in something that uh, makes you feel really comfortable or that you like. Okay? Understand the full picture before you, uh, before you jump in and holding the most amount of asset for as little cash flow out of your own pocket is the only thing that you need to, uh, need to factor in. Okay. I said I'd cover the, uh, the benefits and the risks. Let's start with the risks first because building you is not without risk. There are things that can go wrong. As we've all heard in the last three years, and this is the one that, that, that uh, most people are concerned about, is that cost overruns and variations can be added. Um, what this looks like is when Metricon a couple of years ago increased all of their build contract prices by $80,000 uh, and people had to come up with more money. So I understand why this is a risk and I understand why it concerns people. Uh, this is the number one uh, concern. The second one is around the timeframes being extended out and are taking longer if you're covering interest until you've got rental income coming in. So absolutely valid concern, number two. Um, the big one is if, what if the builder goes broke and I don't actually get the, uh, get the house that, uh, that I thought I was gonna be getting. What's not well understood is as soon as the builder gets on site, then the builder's insurance policy is in place. And that building insurance policy uh, with the relevant state regulatory body means that the insurance policy will cover the completion of the build. So really, the risk is making sure that the builder gets to site uh, and then starts because then their uh, insurance policy kicks in. Okay? But while these are valid risks, uh, they're not valid risks if you're partnering with OpenCorp because as you will, uh, will, will have heard if you've been through the process already or will hear when you, uh, when you meet with one of the, the property strategists in my team, we are so confident based on our builder relationships, our knowledge of the market, uh, our knowledge of the risks, our, our strategies to mitigate the risks that we offer guarantees and protections that mitigate these, these three risks. Okay? We provide a full fixed price contract. I can sit here and say hand on heart that not one client has paid a cent more than the contract price uh, in the last, well, ever, but especially in the last three or four years. So those $80,000 increases that Metricon were issuing, issuing if, you, uh, if you did it yourself, doesn't apply to an open court uh, build. We provide guaranteed timeframes where we guarantee everything in our control and uh, obviously both of those previous guarantees apply if the builder goes broke, uh, your price is fixed. We need to uh, work through that process to get a new builder. Uh, and obviously we were, uh, we're guaranteeing the time frame because the choice of builder was, uh, was something under our control. So the risks that we provide are there to be able to give you peace of mind so you can get all the benefits of building you. You can hold a larger portfolio. You can get a much better financial result, um, but you're not carrying the risk because you're partnering with us. And I mean, done it for over 20 years. We know what we're doing. So let's then quickly recap, what are the benefits of building new? The first is that you can actually come up with an optimal design and floor plan for an investor. This is not to be confused with a project home floor plan because the builder is uh, motivated to maximize their profit. They build in wasted square meterage that just adds build cost, but doesn't bring in any more rent. Through the relationships we have with the builders, we can actually customize the floor plans to be ideal for investment and give our clients the maximum ROI on that property. Low stamp duty, you're only paying stamp duty on the land, you're not paying it on the whole property, which you are if you buy established. So one of the misnomers with established is, oh, I'm able to get the rent and able to get the tax benefits straight away. You are, but you're also paying stamp duty on the whole purchase price, which basically erodes any of that benefit. And a lot of people aren't aware that you can actually claim the interest during construction on the build component. That's thousands of dollars of extra tax benefit that we're getting back for our clients uh, before they've even got a tenant. Uh, that's, the, uh, that's the kicker here that we can, uh, we can build in. I talked about depreciation. You can maximize your tax benefits there. Um, more rental appeal, so you've got less vacancy risk. That gives you more rent initially and ongoing. Most importantly, old houses can be nice, right? I live in one, but they can be a massive drain on your cash flow because the maintenance is so much higher. So even in addition to the, that side-by-side -side comparison I gave you, Okay, the, the increased maintenance risk, therefore the weekly holding costs on established can blow out much more than what it can on a new property. So there you have it guys, uh, a quick summary for you on all of the benefits, risks and side-by-side -side comparison on building new versus established. Remember, don't invest in the property, invest in the strategy that's gonna give you the best financial result. And it's critical to understand 
uh, why a lot of uh, groups and investment advisors focus purely on established property and blue chip because they're typically buyers agents taking a percentage of the purchase price that they charge you. That's not how open court charge. Our fee structure is far more affordable for, for, for significantly more inclusions than that. And um, the final thing to be aware of around how the market works is kickbacks from developers and so on. We're very proud at OpenCorp of the track record that we have. Uh, as you've probably heard by now, um, our uh, property selections have meant that our clients have outperformed the market by $254,000 per property uh, over the last 14 years. Okay, that's a, a quarter of a million dollar benefit uh, that our clients have got partnering with OpenCorp compared to buying the average Australian investment over that time. The only way that we're going to achieve those results okay, is to be in the high demand areas with low supply and in high demand areas, developers don't need to be working with OpenCorp. We're able to get access to land in these areas because of our relationships and because of our 19 year longevity, uh, not because there are developer kickbacks on the table. So I fully appreciate that that's how other groups in the industry might work. It's not how OpenCorp work. Our cards on the table that you get a great property that works for you, it grows in value, the rent continues to go up, the holding cost is low, hence why you're able to add another property and another property to your portfolio. And to summarize, that's why open court clients are two and a half times more likely to get three plus properties in their investment portfolio than the average Australian investor. So I hope that summarized new versus established for you. I hope it's clarified some of the misnomers around the industry and things that you need to look out for, but uh, underpinned um, open court performance underpinned by our results is what we're proud of. And we'd love to partner with you and help get you some amazing benefits, just like our other clients have had by applying the right strategy and getting the right property for your individual circumstances.